Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So this is the first episode of a new series I'm calling Backyard Bandits. And the reason for that is we're starting off fresh in Osmium, uh, Rogue Tech 1.61. And it's the most recent version I updated just before I started uh, recording. And this is um, the night before this is released. So whatever day that is, I don't even know. But it's the day before this, one was, this episode was released. So everything is updated. Now I decided to go with uh, a start of um, primitive, meaning we start off with all primitive mechs. And this is going to be interesting. Now, I now I, I just to make sure I was I knew I would be able to to pull this off because you know starting with primitive mechs is kind of you don't know what the hell is going to happen, right? So I played I, I started a, a different uh, uh, game up and played a bunch of missions with it just to see how the mechs would progress. And like I say, I really liked it. I really liked the play of starting with Primitive. Um, it's difficult, yes, and but it's fun because you have to upgrade everything on the mech, right? So with that being said, I'm gonna do a couple things before we get into a battle here. Um, we will be doing a battle today. I've already got the mission picked out. I know what we're gonna do, but I wanna go through and uh, just kind of uh, uh, show everybody some of the new stuff and what's going on. So the store I think is improved if we go to the store real quick. Um, it's interesting because we're on a backwards, uh, backwoods world and the um, stuff that shows up in the store is all pretty basic. But it's all stuff that you could use to upgrade like really crap, crappy mechs. Now bolt-on rockets. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to buy both of these for now. Um, and I'll show you why here in a second. This is a actually really cool feature they added. I think it's a brilliant uh, a brilliant little piece. Um, I'm also going to go ahead. I'm going to, well, I'll leave the medium laser for now. But the store has changed slightly. Um, and selling is still the same. But, you know, everything has changed slightly. Whereas, you know, it's nice to see the uh, backwards worlds having basic tech. So that's the store. Uh, command center hasn't changed. It's still the same. Now, um, if it switches over here, here we go. So I've got this set to um, half skull variants. So we're on a one skull planet to start. Uh, Urukurane, I, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correct. Um, it's in the room. I'll show you where that is in a second. So we've got half skull, one skull, and, and one and a half skull missions to go ahead and do. Uh, the barracks, now they've given you an option of starting without um, without the, uh, the Ronin. So I was able to start the game with regular pilots. Now I got I kept six. You started off with seven. I got rid of one of them, and I kept six of them. Uh, Scramble's going to end up being the leader of my second uh, platoon. But the idea behind this is is that uh, our pilots are all old um, all old people um, whose parents were mech warriors at one time, and they've these guys inherited the mechs, learned a little bit about them, but not too much. And the mechs have sort of been sitting in disrepair, and now the the uh, um, their sort of homesteads and their homelands are being uh, um, their lifestyle is being threatened by uh, uh, different factions. So they've kind of gotten together, decided they've had enough, and they're going to use their uh, their parents' old mechs to um, basically get back at the people who have been uh, causing them problems. So that's the whole idea with these guys. So they're all, I, I, you know, I, I did, did the uniforms the same as I normally do with everybody, made everybody looking forward. That's all I did to change them. The names are all the same, except for uh, Queen Bee, which I, I changed her name. I can't remember what it was originally. It was something ridiculous, but changed it to Queen Bee. But they're all older, older pilots, right? So this is our uh, main guy, Clem Kadiddlehopper. If you don't know who Clan Kadiddlehopper is, I just suggest go ahead and uh, look it up. I'm not going to tell you any more than that. But uh, his nickname's Hopper. So that's our main pilot. Um, they've changed the skills here slightly. So there's no more fire and maneuver. Um, so evasive pips are immune to sensor lock, which is kind of cool. Plus one melee defense and minus 5% melee damage taken. So that's, it looks like these two skills, piloting and guts, are really good for melee pilots. And then gunnery and tactics would be good for... Um, uh, regular combat pilots. So instead of multiple target here, we've got Bandit, which 25% 25% increased critical strike chance, plus four to clustering roll uh, modifiers, which I'm assuming is for missiles. 
and then um, plus five percent to called shot modifier, which is kind of cool. So the clustering rule modifier, I'm assuming um, when you fire missiles off, generally the first, like in particular with the LRMs, SRMs I think roll randomly to hit per individual missile. So there is no clustering, but with LRMs and I think MRMs, what happens is whatever the wherever the first missile hits, the other missiles will hit either that location or locations adjacent to it. So there's a cluster sort of location. So if you hit the right arm, you might only hit the right arm and right torso with no chance of hitting the head, right? So if, if the first one lands on the head, then the chances are it would hit all the torsos and stuff. If you hit the CT, it'll hit both side torsos or the legs, things like that. So the plus four to clustering roll modifiers, I, I'm assuming means that more missiles will actually hit the, the location that the first missile hits. I'm assuming that. So if you're do a called shot roll, let's say on somebody's head, then you have more chances of more missiles hitting the head than normal. If that, I think that's correct. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure that's correct. And then the rest of the skills have all remained the same. Now, this tactic skill, I've always loved it, uh, but with multiple target and fire maneuver, those two kind of always outweighed it. But this skill um, is nice, tactician. Uh, remove one bar of stability damage when reserving, which is great, plus two resolve gain, minus 50% critical hits taken, which is great, and plus one to initiative and tactics rolls. So, yeah, that's what our commander is going to start going with, and then we're going to switch over and take uh, Bandit here as well. Um, so now, the mech base. So, originally when I started, uh, I started off, like when I did my play test, I started off with an Orion, a Dervish, um, I don't remember what the next one was, and then two 20-ton troopers, but this role looks pretty good. We've got an archer, an old-style archer, an old-style dervish, old-style gladiator, and a pair of the same uh, fire bees. Now let's have a look at the fire bee. These guys are both the same. So we've got an LRM-5 and three SRM-2s, all with Inferno ammo. Um, and you'll notice up here on the left-hand side, the uh, this is where the individual um, items can be put. So the bolt-on rockets will actually go in here. They don't add any weight, um, and they're one shot, but they, they you do have a specialist slot, so you can actually just drop in a pair of bolt-on rockets if you want, which is kind of cool. So each mech can kind of have its own specialty, specialist sort of tree or whatever. Um, but you'll notice here all the mechs have uh, primitive armor, a primitive engine, which is a pain in the butt, and all primitive um, headgear. So uh, fire control system, cockpit, and sensors. Everything is primitive. Um, so our targeting is crap to start. Our uh, engine speed is crap to start. Um, the weight is ridiculous. Like, it's just terrible. So the when we start finding regular fusion engines, like regular engines, we can replace this, gain some weight, you know, add some more armor, things like that. So the reason why I, when I first started, I thought, oh no, this is going to be bad. But when you start getting stuff, like you, you have to think about replacing all the things in here, right? Like uh, primitive fire control system, minus one to uh, um, extreme range and long range, right? Minus one piloting, minus 20% sensors in sight. These things are all important. So you'll be taking uh, early components just to basically, even like basic fire control you'll be taking just to upgrade this stuff, right? Basic uh, engine, uh, you'll be taking that. And if you can get basic armor to start too, like you definitely need to, to do that, right? So, um, so yeah, so that's kind of with that. So that, that's the fire bees. And then our gladiator, once again, all primitive headgear, primitive CT, um, basic heat sinks. It's got a large and two medium lasers and it's got an armored cowl. Uh, so that's separate than the actual cockpit. Usually this, this was the actual cockpit, but now it's not. So that's separate. And then we've got a dervish. So let's uh, have a look at this guy. So this guy's, it's actually not bad for 55 tons. Pair of LRM-10s, pair of SRM-2s. It's it's a ammo heavy build. We're not going to change anything on the first battle. Like I'm definitely going to, like we don't need a full ton of ammo per SRM2 because we're never going to fire 50 times with these things. You know what I mean? So like even a half a ton of ammo with a pair of SRMs would be perfect, but we'll worry about that later. We're just going to go in first battle with just the straight up stuff that we have. I just bought these so that you guys can see what they what they do, but we'll put those on later. And then the Archer. 
So this is really our the heaviest mech. Pair, pair of LRM20s uh, and medium lasers. Now the heat sinking on this is garbage, of course. Like we're not going to be firing everything. It would be firing two LRMs or that's it. Now notice the heat too, I think, in some items has dropped a little bit. Um, for I, I mean, I don't know. A, a couple of the items that I picked up, the things were slightly different. So as we go through, I'll, I'll, we'll have a look at that kind of stuff. But yeah, so that's these mechs. Um, so, oh yeah, sorry. And then the quirk for this guy, let's have a look at this. So th once we get into melee mech capability, this one's got battle fist with plus one melee accuracy and 5% melee damage. Um, so that's this guy's combat quirk. Now this thing can't be pulled off, right? You can only add stuff, but you can't take the stuff that's already on there off. It's just, it's fixed, right? So that's cool. Um, so let's start off like we normally do. Let's go to engineering and get our power systems bought. Get that going. Uh, navigation, I'll show you where we are here in the map. So we're down here in the south. We zoom back out. So they don't have um, the fully interactive combat map. So it's just basically us. And that's fine. We're right here. Um, and it tells you what the uh, who owns what. Uh, magist magistracy of Canopus is 36 and 64% for the locals. That's kind of new. That's, that's really cool. Uh, attack resources 3.0. I think that's when you're doing, I think that's the percentage change, right? And then based on, I think that's based on a half skull. I can't remember. But anyway, this is very a very basic world. So we're going to go ahead and... Um, try and keep this as much local as possible uh, and then everything else I think is still the same um, so let's go to the command center get straight into a battle here we're gonna pull off a relatively easy one just to ease into this we're gonna do uh, price of discretion it's an escort mission so basically I'm just gonna say that this mission we're escorting our our family and friends um, away from uh, where the combat's gonna be taking place we're going to be fighting the magi uh, magistry. I'm going to I'm going to call it magistry. I can't call I can't pronounce magist. You know what I'm talking about. So we're going to we're going to be able to uh, uh, move them away from where the magistry is landing, and um, so that's what this escort mission is. So we're going to start with that. Negotiate. We're going to go full salvage because it's 625, and we need as much gear as possible. So let's go ahead and drop our mechs in, and we're going to take Hopper, uh, Arachne. Um, Yes. Hot shot. Sounds like a gladiator mech to me. Actually, scramble should probably be in the gladiator. But we're going to hold off from bringing her in. And then let's bring... Uh, we need pilot experience. So let's bring Queen Bee. Uh, yeah. Anyway, we're going to do this. Now, you notice down here, Lance... We've only got one Lance right now, but once that... Um, more lances come into play we can actually shift back and forth and this will change the lances here which I think is a pretty cool idea I didn't mind the individual like the layout here but this allows the lances to stay already in place which is kind of cool so let's go ahead and deploy and get this done all right here we go looks like we got some guys with us all right, we got to go way over there. So um, the way I had the settings set up in this game, the actual game settings, um, the, uh, the game settings are basically my standard startup settings. Um, so uh, with the exception of Primitive World, you know, the commander getting 10,000 XP. I took the maximum amount of sea bills to start. Uh, with this particular one. I set the salvage to four pieces. Um, and because of, because of the number of different variants of mechs and stuff, uh, I set it to four. Um, what else did I do? Alright, get you up there. So, I think that's about it. Um, I don't think I really changed anything Oh, oh, the difficulty, so I'm not, you know, four from the end. I just started off with the default difficulty, uh, just so we can get used to the combat. 
Uh, and then I'll start cranking it up as we go along, just based on you know how good we're doing or how bad we're doing. I think we'll be fine uh, difficulty-wise, so I don't see turning it down in any way. Um, and the reason why we started over here in this mission rather than where we normally start over here, uh, one of my one of the settings that they've got when you start is that you can have random start locations and different map sizes. So you can either have standard start locations and um, the regular map size, um, or there's a, a bunch of variety, like a variety of other choices. So I chose random start locations just to, to spice it up a little bit so it's less predictable. And then I chose 30% um, map size. So the map is 30% bigger, um, and we just start randomly. So it may take a little bit to get into combat, but once we get more uh, mechs and stuff, um, and we're playing on, you know, with like a lot more guys in the battlefield, we'll have a lot more room to maneuver and, and do uh, different things. So that was my thought, that was my goal. Uh, now, can we get down off here? There's the question. I guess we gotta go this way. So there's a couple things like this that are going to be problematic at the start. Now, I can go ahead and change that. They've set it up so that you can easily go ahead and, and change the settings if you want to. Uh, some of the settings that if you change them, it'll basically wreck your saves. So you got to be careful. Uh, where are we going here? That way. So let's take the road. Uh, yeah, so... You know, some of the settings will um, wreck game saves, but things like map size and stuff shouldn't wreck the game save. So I'm not really that worried about it. All right, once we get up there um, and we get contact, I'll just cut back. All right, so we wait for Hopper to get up here. Got a couple more turns before he's up with everybody else. Um, so when I was playing before in the test matches, um, the one thing I noticed is that the AI is a little better um, with fighting. They do a lot more firing, a lot more engaging. Um, and the AI for the vehicles in escort missions seems to be a little better. Uh, and your uh, helpers seem to be a little bit better. They were definitely engaging when I was playing last time. So that's a good thing to know. And I don't know whether it's because it's a bigger map size or they just try and stick with you. But when you move across the map, you notice they're actually following me. They're not just standing back and, you know, uh, bracing or doing whatever. Okay, we should be able to detect if there's enemy enemies up here. Yeah, we got enemy contact now. On my way. We got somebody down here. Let's just, we don't have range on them. Let's get full uh, movement here. Okay, here we go. So you can see they changed the initiative system at the top. So you can, basically they set it up for the lance that's already got, or the uh, initiative phase. It's, ooh, nice shot. So 20, 19, 18, and then still to go. So we can see who still needs to go and who needs to stay, or, or who's already gone. It's a little different. It used to be up in the corner here around 17 and then the turn it was on. Now you can just kind of see when people are going. So. I need you to sprint up here, buddy. Because that guy's got his back to us. So it's kind of good we're on a cold planet to start because we're going to have heat problems. Scorpion LRM, 29%. 10%. Let's take the 29. And we've got plenty of ammo. 12 turns. Alright, it's a start. I've noticed, too, uh, all of the um, encounters that I've been in um, at this level have had mechs all with full armor. Mechs and vehicles. I ha I've yet to encounter anything without full armor yet. Which I I'm excited about. Alright, let's move up. I get you. On the move. Gladiator's a little big for 55 tons, but whatever. I'm gonna fire this guy with the large. The nah. Nope. Negative, Negative damage. damage. All right, Queenie. Let's see if we can see anybody else up here. 
I got something else over here. I heard it blip, but I don't see anything. All right, let's warm this guy up. Uh, we're going to fire it all because we got lots of ammo. Burn! So there's two different fire effects now, too. You can install the new and the old. Um, I had the new fire effects installed, and I don't like them as much as the old ones. The, it's a deeper, deeper red and then black from the smoke. This is, I don't know, I kind of like it better. Okay, let's put a couple of LRM-10s on this guy down here. Here it comes. Nice. So they are, you know, uh, great, I'm being hit too. Thanks. Thanks, ass. Light Holding firm. As you can see, I kept uh, friendly fire turned on. Okay, he's making a break for it. Don't blame you, buddy. You were a little overwhelmed. It is eight against two, it looks like, so... I don't blame you for running. This guy's going on 10. I wonder if we can punch through his side. Okay, the big one hit. Nice. I'm on the clock. What do you want? Let's just fire on this guy. Nice. Oh yeah, man. I used to um, I used to choose the AI for uh, the voice of my main guy, but now it just seems to be a lot of clicks. There doesn't seem to be any AI voice. Not exactly sure why that is. So I just chose a voice for the main guy. The main guy. Uh, it's hard to get. You know what? This guy's got to either be all SRM or all LRM. So maybe we pull, once we get some more SRMs, we'll pull off the uh, LRM incendiaries. I mean, it's not going to do much to this guy. We need to get regular ammo in there, too. But you can see what I mean about our guys engaging. They are moving forward. You still get the random mech that just does the turn and standing there. But for the most part, like I said, the last um, one of the escort missions that I played, the lances were definitely engaging. And you can see that guy's running, but he's still engaging, right? He's taken off and he's still engaging us. Which is great. Thank you. Thank you for the sensor lock. We're not going to move. We're just going to fire. Ooh, terrible. Uh, let's get some height. Hopefully not shoot our own guy in the back. Drop a pair of lerms on this guy. Using a lot of ammo. Well, we needed salvage anyways. All right, um, move down here. So the test, I think, of the uh, AI for moving vehicles will definitely be the uh, guys here. I think you need to activate. So let's move you back this way because you're the fastest mech. Sure, we got tons of ammo. Oh, we got one hit. Two hits, nice. You don't hit what you don't shoot at. All right. Gonna move out into the open here. We get a better chance to hit if we're not in the trees. I mean, it's minor, but still better. Nice.
So one of the things when I was playing um, one of the missions, I had one of my, my trooper run in. It was going to step on a vehicle, and uh, it ran in. I'm going to go ahead and activate. And stepped and missed, lost his piloting role. He fell to the ground and then got shredded by the enemies. And they all targeted him too. All the enemies targeted him. So, um, you just need to be careful if you're going to do melee early on. That, um, I hope that's medium laser range. Um, how many turns have we got left? I'm going to hold off. Because I don't know how many guys left we had to fight. You're just going to stand there and fire. Oof, maybe not. Let's actually get up a little higher here. See if that helps. Let's get on the road. Yeah, it's a little better. Oh yeah, man, the big one hit. Beautiful. But you can see, even, you know, playing with primitive and half skull. Here they come. Convoy's up. Let's get our family out of here. Family and friends. Gonna turn the camera slightly. And of course mess it all up, because that's what I do. I forgot to show you one of the features in the mech bay too that they've added. When you're in fixing your mech, you can switch to camera view and then they've got four different angles of your mech in the mech bay. It's really cool. So remember before I was saying it's hard to see what the color looks like on the mech? You can actually kind of go in and see the different angles and you can actually right click and move your mech around in a circle. Shows you what your mech looks like. It's pretty cool. I'm sure that's in... I'm, I'm going to put that in the intro, so I'm sure you, you've you probably already seen that. Ooh! Alright, we got some helpers. We did most of the work, though, yeah. That, we'll just say that. We got company. Oh! Apparently we got a second lance coming up. What do we got here? Javelin? Okay. Alright, Hopper. That's a direct line of sight. Let's see what our chance to hit is. Probably pretty bad. 10%. I'm going to hold off. Just for now. Okay, Arachne. Let's get you down here. Probably pretty low on this guy, too. Yeah. Yep. So someone, I, I, once again, I apologize. I'm terrible with names. Somebody was asking me about, we still got a guy here, right? Asking me about um, why your chances to hit at the very beginning like this are so low and, I, you know, 0.9% chance. And you can kind of hover over and see where your, your advantage, disadvantages are. Height advantage is a huge thing. Line of sight is a huge thing, you know. And if you don't have a good chance to hit, move to a better position. Don't fire and just move to a better position rather than wasting ammo. You know, especially if you're limited with, with the amount of ammo you have. Definitely want to sprint. Sorry for that door banging down there. It's the wind. Alright, uh, 4%. We're going to fire anyway. Oh, it was a hit! <laughs> See what I mean? You don't hit unless you shoot. 4%. So we got our, our uh, buddies moving up here, which is kind of nice. Oh, up armored Saladin. Shit, that better not be an AC-20. Sure is. Sure is. That thing's got to die fast. Centuri on. Aye, aye. Infernos are going to be useless against this vehicle pretty much, but let's get down here. we got to start applying some damage to it, so let's get on it. Ah, oh, three damage per shot. For a whole lot of nothing. The big thing is too, like if you're having a hard time hitting them at low level, like a half a skull, most likely they're going to have a hard time hitting you. So make sure you're moving at all times. You know, as much, um, get as many evasion tokens or, or chevrons as you possibly can. 
use cover as much as you can so only one guy on the enemy can see you force them to use their uh, indirect fire because it's harder for them to hit you um, so I'm gonna fire from here and not move only because I can take a shot from this guy with this mech plus um, it gives me a better chance to hit and they've already gone so Oh, no, they haven't. I guess they have. Good to go. All right. Let's get my uh, evasion tokens up. Hopefully, you won't shoot for me. I keep calling them tokens. They're not tokens. They're chevrons. Firing. Okay, one hit. Nice. They might only have an AC-10, though. A ripper. Javelin. What's that last guy? Don't know. Another ripper. Okay. As you can see, the, the uh, helicopters move a hell of a lot faster now, which is awesome. Thank you so much for that. Let's get into here. Um, 13% with the SRM2s on this guy. 0.9. And 11 with the LRMs. I wish I could multi-target, but I can't. I think we're going to go this route because we have a better chance to hit with more tens. All right, four looks like five hits maybe. Beautiful. That was like 25 percent. I don't know if those rippers have got tags or whatever, but we'll find out. I'm interested to see how those tags play out. Where's our last guy? Back here. Yeah, I see that the, they're doing a better job keeping up and moving around. Nice. Oh, he's panicking. Does that mean that they'll bail out? Will they bail out of a vehicle? Okay, nice. That would be interesting to know. I guess they will eventually if, um, if, uh, they get the vehicle um, mod in here where we can actually pilot vehicles they should bail out I mean if it, if the they should make it so that the track propulsion or um, the hover propulsion is destroyed the vehicle just can't move it just sits still and then any panic like any um, anything that would cause panic gets doubled because they obviously can't move right so it's like Anytime they get hit, the panic is doubled because they, uh, most likely they're going to get destroyed eventually, so they're more likely to bail out. I mean, that's how I would do it, but once again, I'm not a coder, so I don't know how difficult that would be. But that's what, that's to me, that's what makes sense. Nice. Awaiting order. All right, Queenie. Get some flank on over here. Here we go. Let's get some flank on. Flank on. Ooh. Oof. Giving them everything I've got. Good chances to hit, I'm not gonna not take those. A lot of nothing. I think we're just going to straight up attack. 42 in the Ripper. That could be a kill. Oh, he's got like nothing. No armor or anything. Javelin, 42%. Damage in the torso. His LRM 15 looks like it might be knocked out. AC 20. I don't know. It Red is it means that it's knocked out or is jammed or something? I don't know. L7 
I'll save this for my guys with less weapons. 24 on that guy. Let's take out the Ripper. Shredded! Wish I could hear what my pilot's saying. I could turn it up, but that means everybody else's voices would be super loud. Gonna have to change that voice, I think. I'm pretty sure I could go in and just switch it. I tried before, and then it just would just always give me a random one. But I'm sure that's fixed by now. I might go in and change it to, what's his name? The Big Redo, the guy that gives you the training in the original, uh, the original series. Or the original uh, quest chain from the original Battletech. I think his last name was Redo. Now, here's the thing. I still think Fire and Maneuver is a thing. Although it might, I think it might be a quirk now. Or might uh, be involved in a cockpit um, modification. Because I have seen um, some vehicles use it against me. So in the, like I said in the brief series that I was playing before this, there was a couple of vehicles that used it against me. So they would fire and then maneuver. I'm like, wow, how are they doing that? How are they doing that? Are you? I copy. I hope so, because this guy's all yours right here. I copy. Two mediums hit, but not enough to kill. Which means somebody's got to expend their rounds on that guy. Okay, that was interesting. What was he trying to do? Okay, let's get out a direct line of sight of the uh, javelin, and then let's try and finish this thing off. Oh my God! Really? That's going to hurt. You destroyed the basic sensors. We could use those. <laughs> you see what I mean, though? Like it's like beautiful. Finally engaging. No, destroy the fire control system standard. We need that. <laughs> Even the most basic components we need. Oh, he's got... He's blowing up in landmines. Copy that. A little bit of a flank on over here. Uh, who are we going on here? Probably the Saladin. Get rid of it. Ripper. Eh. Eh. Yep. It's all yours. Yeah, look at that. One thing I noticed is to get you do more damage it, once you've penetrated the armor, the internals will take more damage sometimes depending on the weapon you're using. Gonna show me your back, are you? Well, they've lost 50% of their number, so it makes sense that those guys would run. Who puts a flamer on a helicopter? Like, if you think about it, you got it facing forward. I mean, if you fly up and stop and then you use it, sure, but technically you're still moving. Technically. I can't remember who I was, was talking about this, too. They were talking about how in Rogue Tech you don't lose the evasion tokens, and that's ridiculous. And I'm like, no, it's not, because if you think about it, you're all, you're, you're moving, right? And just because someone goes a fraction of a second before you, your evasion isn't you dodging somebody's attack. Because you can't dodge a laser. How are you going to dodge a laser? It's light. It arrives at you instantly upon firing. Right? So you're not going to dodge it. Right? Your evasion is basically your speed and momentum. Right? That makes it difficult to be targeted. That's all it is. You're not dodging anything. So your evasion just because you're moving you know won't go away you're, it's equally difficult for everybody shooting at you to hit you because you're not dodging anybody right at least that's how I see it man you're slow as hell dude that's your full sprint 
That can't be your full sprint. Why are we slowed all of a sudden? That could be bad if we're like that all the time. It might be, yeah, they may have added that if you're, if you stop for a turn, like I did there, I was stopped. It takes a little while to get back up to speed again. Maybe. That would be my guess. It's nice to not have to worry about those vehicles though. Come on, land a few. There's one, two, three, nice. Yeah, see what I mean though? The, I'm not worried about the vehicles. Although I'm now worried about the damn minefields because of that asshole. Put the mines there, beautiful. What's he using? I'll have to check out what he's got. I wonder if it's like Thunderbolt. Where are you here? There you are. High explosion. Mind dispenser. He's using the mind dispenser already. High explosives. Okay. So it's like it's basically like missile artillery. That's cool. So these are our three vehicles here. Yes, Commander. Let's get back over here, Queenie. Oh shoot, we're going through a minefield. Two damage. Okay, not that bad. Gonna fire it. Engaging target. You never know. It's bizarre. We start with like super heavy max too. I wish they were a little lighter. Like the the heaviest guy being fifty five tons, not seventy. Ow. You realize you're fighting a gladiator, right? Oh shit. I take it back. Knock my ass down. Really? Well, we don't have the best pilots, so... I'm assuming that's why. Where's our last vehicle? Just right here. Yeah, see? They're all crossing the water. No problems. Now we'll see if that guy up there stops going. We're going to engage the, uh, Vindicator. We have to. Wow, terrible chances to hit. Looked like I hit him a couple times, but maybe not. Don't use the... Can I step on my own guys? Ah, just a thought. 70 ton damage to that truck would... Like a 70 ton mech stepping on that truck would be nice. I should just turn around and just target his hex with LRMs. Oh, sorry, I thought the enemy was there. My bad. Okay, at least the Ripper is staying over there. I'd love to be able to melee that the javelin, but I'm so afraid of falling over. That's the fire bee. Yeah, see, he's got fire maneuver. Yeah, see, we got better movement now. Maybe that. Maybe it was that. Maybe that's it. Let's move into here. Maybe if you stop completely, 
it's harder to hit stuff. Chances are I'm going to hit my own guy if I do that. I may not this way. Chances to hit her so low. Maybe we can rip him out of there. Okay, a few hits. Sixteen percent chance to melee. And I can't go anywhere anywhere. Anyway, um I'm trapped here. These guys have trapped me. Let's just rotate. Terrible chances, but we're gonna fire. Yeah, well. There's a better chance to punch, but here's the problem with punching. If I miss and I fall over again, it's another wound for the pilot, right? Commander. What side is this guy damaged on? That's the left side. I'm on his left side. Let's get into here. Let's just shoot him up. Ah, a couple points. Cool, that vehicle had a Draconis, uh, not a, is that your Draconis Combine? Yeah. Tattoo on the front. Ready for order. That's better. Can't move anyway, so might as well fire. Wow, really? Yeah, no kidding. You'd be lucky to get out of there. Wait a minute, he can move? Bastard. I should have checked to see if I could move. I wonder if it's a new mechanic where if you get knocked down, you can't actually move when you stand up. Which would make sense because... Oh, stop it with your melee. Because before you could stand up and then move. Okay, he took landmine damage, which is nice. Wait a minute. What happened? To my movement. Does it have to do with my heat, maybe? Wow. Let's leave these off. Or maybe it has something to do with recoil? I don't know. That's interesting. That would force your... Uh, let's get in behind him. That would force you to um, have your missile max hidden and using indirect fire. Yeah, buddy, enjoy it. Yeah, it looks like this vehicle is like Oh, he's coming back to help. No, no. Okay, I might be far enough away. Looks like I am. Don't even bother moving. Just hammer this guy. Yeah, man. Finally. Let's get rolling, guys. So that was pretty good. Um, I, I feel like... I mean, if, we, if, we, if I had only had, like, light and medium max... Um... It wouldn't, f like, I don't know. I think it's designed, I mean, I can obviously up the difficulty, right? I think it's designed for those people who 
What is up with the speed on this guy all of a sudden? Um, maybe it's got something to do with, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, for, for new players, you know, having that extra armor to be able to work out and figure out um, how to actually move around and survive. Although I will say when I first, yeah, see now we can start moving full. We're back into this again. That's kind of nice. That's super helpful. Uh, let's not move too far so that the guys can see us. And now these guys will just all move. Yeah, convoy movement. Like, they even cut corners. Beautiful. These guys are moving up again. Yeah, AI. So much better. Whoever's working on the AI, I don't know whether it's like a, uh, a road tech thing or a battle tech, regular battle tech. AI, so much better. So much better. I'm nothing, I'm nothing but impressed with Osmium so far. Like I said, I haven't played all that long. I don't know what the clan stuff is like, you know, the uh, harder missions and things like that. But it, from what I've seen so far, I know, I know I'm starting off in a primitive start, but there we go. Sending more guys in to hunt us. Like I said, like, look at you taking a shortcut, right? He's just mapping the fastest road to get there. So, brilliant. Just absolutely brilliant. Project B was good. Don't get me wrong. I really like Project B. But I'm, I'm, I was, I don't know. Um, what do you call it? Uh, timid, I guess, is the best word. To, to start this one because I didn't know how much had changed if it was going to be the same gameplay experience. It really is the same, it's just better. That's really all I can say is it's just better. Now I think the enemies start at random spots too, so when they when they come in in the next uh, lance might be a little different. So we got two out now. Three. Almost four. Okay, we can't see them now, so we can still move fast. Let's get, let's push over here. See if we can spot them. We're not going until they're all dead anyway. We need the salvage. <laughs> we need the basic cockpit gear. <laughs> oh, don't pull out of there. Oh, shit. I guess I gotta be closer to them. That would make sense. Got our guys over here moving. At least they're still trying to move up. Rather than just standing there. Uh, let's get you up higher. Um Let's get the fire bee down here. Fire bee reminds me of a uh a character in uh Avatar the uh, series, not the uh James Cameron stolen name version, but the original Avatar um anime series. There was a uh, character named Smeller B. Nice. We did spot an enemy target, so we do know they're out when they are over there. Um. There you go. Sure, let's get up here. There we go. 
All right, let's see what we got. All right, Arachne. So this is, they're right on the edge here. So they are, it's a hunter. 3RM, it's probably the LRM version. Um, let's get over here, get a side shot on it. What else do we have down here? Something or else. Something or else. Oh, it's a uh, ballistic version, eh? We're almost out of LRMs. Good hits, though. There we go. Relatively direct line of sight. 14% firing. All right, a little bit of damage. Waiting for orders. On my way. Maybe we'll just evac, I don't know. Oh nice, the big one hit, beautiful. Standing by. Mm, let's not get in there. Get some fire on this guy though. 10 damage with the SRMs. So they got a lot of options now when you first start the game. So they've got a better light mod, which I'm using. So the better headlights on the, on the uh, mechs. Flee. Is that something we really need? light carrier. Okay, that could be bad. I might want to kill that though because it might have some better LRMs. I'd like to be able to, well, I was thinking about downgrading the um, the LRMs on the Archer from 20s to 15s. Use the weight to add something else on, but I don't know. we get eyes on anything? I don't think we want to use our LRMs until we can see something. Aye, aye. There we go. If we're going to be going in these longer engagements, I'm going to have to really work on the ammo situation. Yeah, I have four points. Points is points. How many turns have we got left? Four turns of LRM fire. Let's get down to the road. Don't think we're going to have a good chance. If we get 25%, I'll take it, but 0 0.9, 16. 16 in the light carrier, though. Don't know if that's going to be enough. No, let's not bother. All right, hot shot. Let's get up here. Ooh, there we go. Roger. We can el eliminate this uh, support tank here. Okay, the big one hit again. It's protected by the woods, though, so he's taking very little damage. Our guys are real our guys are really left behind now. That's fine. Is he backing up? Nope, he's turning. Alright, taking a little bit of damage. Interested to see what this guy's carrying. Uh, he's got the high, high explosive and then missiles. What if that was a minefield? Might have been. Might be the same L or the same carrier that we have. Commander. Queen B, you are so awesome. Everything is awesome when Queen B's part of the team. 
Everything is awesome. She's burning this guy's dream. Firing a full salvo. Eh, maybe not. We need to get some more uh, bigger SRMs and stuff. All right, we'll take the 24. Here it comes. So I'm not sure if you noticed, but I've increased the camera zoom on a lot of stuff for combat action. I had to turn down the last one just so we could get through battles a little quicker, but because um, Osmium is playing relatively quickly, like I haven't experienced really any lag, even with the helicopters, um, it's been going really, it's, you know, been going fine, so I don't mind doing a little bit more cutting in and seeing the action and stuff. Uh, let's not engage that guy until this guy is gone. But let's not turn so that guy gets our back if he gets up here. Alright, let's use the last of the LRMs on this guy. Hopefully clear him up. Almost. Oh, I take it back. We got him. That's fine. We need to upgrade your SRM2s to SRM6s, I think. Once we get a better engine in there. It's really like we're going to get six salvage and I think the, the thing we should be taking is better engine cores. That's going to give us a lot of weight to play around with. Now most likely when we do that, um, we're going to have like blank weight because we're not going to be able to fill it with stuff right away. Look at the chance to hit on this. Let's kill this guy, please. Well, we'll hit, hit him really well. Yes, okay, Queenie, get over here. Need you on this guy, please. Burn him. Burn! Why do witches float? Because they're made of wood. Burn! I want to get too close because then I got a range issue with the LRMs. Let's move into here. 27, we'll take it. We got three turns left. Nice. No, you destroyed the sensors! Well, we needed salvage anyways. Not sure who, whose voice that is, but it's really low. Uh, if anyone from the Rogue Tech team is listening, if you send me those sound files, I can I can increase this, the uh, volume on them for you if you want. Beautiful. He's sounding like he's like somebody put a lot of bass on him too, but didn't EQ it. So they pulled out a lot of the mid and high end on the voice. And that's probably why it's so quiet. Commander. But like I said, if someone from the Rotec team is watching and wants me to fix that, please feel free to hit me up. Drop it in the comments section or send me a PM, whatever. And I'll get it fixed for you. I'll actually have the... Uh, guy in our audio department fix the voice and EQ it so it matches the other ones as best as he can. I mean if you're dealing with a source file it's already been already, already been messed around with. It's not much you can do with it but we'll see. Beautiful. See what I mean though? It's like it just the voice is just like All right, firing. And I don't know if that's a Battletech added voice or what that is, but like I said, I'll fix it if they want me to. You got jump jets, man. I didn't realize you had jump jets. That's my bad. Let's engage this sucker. Burn! Well, we don't have incendiaries, but... 
We don't have to worry about running out of SRM2 ammo, that's for sure. <laughs> we got so much SRM2 ammo. I'm just terrified of them shooting one of the arms off. It'll probably blow through the torso and everything. I'm most likely going to strip it off both arms, leave one ton. If I can find a half ton, great, but I'll leave one ton and I'll put it in one of the torsos. Or in the leg or something. Ooh! It's because asshole shooting. Gonna get you to jump out of there. This guy's running. Still fighting though. Still fighting though. Alright, Hopper. Don't even bother moving. Just just rain some death on this guy. Nice. Guess you'll have to what? Use the medium lasers? At your speed? Forget it. Alright, firing. Ah! Couldn't get lucky on that. Alright. That's alright. We'll deal with it. He's moved into a tough spot to get. Can we get him over here? Oh yeah. There we go. Okay, burn him. Yeah, just turn around. Get our stability back, then we'll jump next turn. Wow, all four of them missed, eh? Yeah, I saw that. Ah, shit. This guy's in range now. Oh, maybe not. Well, I hit him for damage. Uh, let's just move over here. Just in case he comes around this way again. Christ, how many how many medium mechs does it take to kill a flea? Just straight up shoot well. Don't get too close to the guy. Screw it, just shoot him. We're not going to get a better vantage point. Okay, there goes the leg. Initiative's lost. Pilot damage. Let's see if we can pull the other leg off. Okay. It's a little bit overkill, but... I don't think we hit the leg. Don't think we hit the leg. Well, we did. It's got 16 left, 27 in the CT. I think we should be able to finish it up. Yeah, maybe not. Reporting critical hits. He's not even panicked, man. The guy's got testicles of steel. Okay, at least the truck moved away. Or the, yeah, our truck moved away. God, thank goodness we're on a uh, on a cold planet, because uh, that would be a big issue if we weren't. Oh, you ejected. Beautiful. Well, we lost all the components in the head, though. Oh, well. All right. Contract payment increased by 500. 5%. One reputation planetary, 1% with Magistry can help us. That's good <laughs> by 500 I'm guessing that's like 500 sea bills whatever it's a good increase though that'll definitely handle our damage is one good thing about having see this is for if you have multiple lances uh, one good thing about having uh, primitive stuff is that it's super cheap to repair all right we're not gonna bother with any mech parts to start we are going to go down first of all they got LRM 15s here ah, Thunderbolt 10 basic cockpits 
Fire control system missile. Ooh. Taking that right away. What about indirect? Let's take that. I think we should probably take two fire control system standards. The ferrofibrous most oh sniper sensors. Um Oh, standard. We should take the four standard fusion cores. We're going to take the four fusion cores. That's an immediate upgrade to all of our stuff. The Pharaoh would be nice, but the cores are better, and these are good. This can go on our main guy. This can probably go on the, um, the Dervish. So let's go with that. Confirm. All right, got a javelin part, AC-20, LRM-5, medium laser, which is we can need. Basic cockpit we need. That's sellable. That's sellable. Oh, beautiful. Three fire control system standards. Oh, my God. And the Pharaoh. Sensor snipers. Yes, sensors basic. How bizarre is it that I'm excited about, like, basic sensors? All right. Okay, 17,000. That's beautiful. All right. There we go. Uh, let's manage our tasks a bit better here. Let's get the mechs that we can do some repairs on up earlier so that we can get these done. And then we'll have, by day 20, we're going to have our second mech bay operating at half capacity. Day 30, it'll be full capacity. Or day 26, it'll be full capacity, I think. So we'll be able to have all these guys back, hopefully before that. But I'm going to leave this episode here. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions, please uh, drop any comments or questions in the, in the comments section down below. I'm, I think I'm going to really enjoy Osmium. It's just, it's, it's like, it's beautiful. I got to say, so far, it's just, it's been really a joy to play. So um, same Rogue Tech uh, play style, better AI. Um, the, the, it's just fun. It's just fun. Um, I'm going to leave it there. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did drop a like, if you haven't subscribed, please feel free to subscribe. You can also drop any comments in the comment section down below. Until next time, we'll see you later.